Today, we're going to talk about why it's risky to diagnose yourself with mental illness. Stay tuned. You know, the other day I thought I heard somebody say my name, but it turned out it was just random talking on TV. According to the DSM-5 here, I probably have schizophrenia, I'm bipolar, and I also have early onset dementia. This makes sense because I almost forgot to hit the like button and subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Now it can be really tempting to thumb through the DSM-5 and diagnose all your friends and relatives with all manner of psychological conditions and clinical disorders. However, this is the equivalent of turning a hypochondriac loose on WebMD, and it's not gonna turn out well. So here are a few reasons why self-diagnosis might not be productive, and then I'll talk about the scientific way to get a formal diagnosis. The first thing you have to know is that terms used in the DSM have specific meanings. Trained clinicians know what a term means and how to recognize it. For example, I think I know what catastrophizing sounds like, but a clinician with years of experience is likely to do a much better job of identifying it than me. Another reason it's risky to self-diagnose is because many times disorders are extreme examples of things that all normal brains do. For example, many people have bouts of anxiety sometimes. That doesn't mean they meet the clinical criteria for an anxiety disorder. A trained clinician can tell when worry turns into excessive worry and might indicate a disorder. Additionally, there's the problem of confirmation bias. You attend only to the things that would match the diagnosis you're convinced you have, but not the things that would disconfirm it. Maybe you find that you relate to a lot of the symptoms of ADHD in a tentative subtype, for example. However, you might not notice that you have some abilities, like being able to focus on a task for long periods of time, that might exclude that diagnosis, even though the other symptoms fit. Speaking of symptoms, many disorders in the DSM-5 have symptom overlap, sharing similar symptoms between disorders. For example, a hallmark of autism spectrum disorder is trouble in social settings. But that's also true of social communication disorder, social anxiety disorder, and others. So how do we tell the difference? Clinical psychologists are able to tell the difference between disorders by using formal clinical assessments. That is, tests designed to measure and test for specific disorders. Many times clinicians give multiple tests to confirm a diagnosis and rule out similar diagnoses. There's a lot of science that goes into creating, validating, refining, and using clinical assessments. It takes a lot of training and experience to become an expert at making clinical diagnoses. The take home message is this. If you're in doubt about whether you have a condition or could benefit from treatment, then you should definitely learn as much as you can about the problem and seek professional help. It's the smart thing to do when you suspect there's a problem. While it's important to learn about different conditions and be aware of ways that brains can be different so you can understand and help yourself or the people you care about, an official diagnosis can only be made by a trained clinician after a formal clinical assessment. Now, you know yourself better than anybody else, and of course it's okay to get a second opinion if you're worried about your diagnosis, but diagnosing is best left to the professionals. Think of it like you would any other medical diagnosis. Now we've got more videos coming up, so help us out, hit the like button, subscribe, help us grow our channel so we can get the word out about important issues in psychology. And until next time, keep thinking. This is totally not the DSM. It, this is just a book full of blank pages. See, just blank, blank pages.